Hello, and welcome to the Keep It Local Maine podcast, where we tell the stories of local business owners, artists, and entrepreneurs, and learn more about what they do, who and what inspires them, their challenges, successes, and more. My name is Todd Regalinski. And I am Kimberly Regalinski. And we are the publishers of Keep It Local Maine, a magazine that helps to showcase local businesses to the people in and around their communities. Thank you for tuning in to our weekly podcast that you can subscribe to on most streaming services such as Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Google Podcasts, and others. You can learn more about us at keepitlocalmaine.com and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube through the links in the show notes. In this episode, we'll be talking with Maine artist Ryan Adams. Ryan is a painter and muralist residing in his hometown of Portland, Maine with his wife, Rachel Gloria, and their two daughters. His background in traditional graffiti led him to creating large-scale mural work and hand-lettered design and signage. His signature gem style of work is a geometric breakdown of letter forms with shadows and highlights included to create depth and movement throughout the pieces. His pieces tend to be bold, colorful, and clever, often including statements within. Currently, Ryan co-owns and operates a hand-painted signage business, designs for a brewery, paints murals any and everywhere, and exhibits his work as often as possible. And now, a quick word from our sponsor. Weather is getting warmer and it's project planning season, which means you should call Maine Commercial Contracting, your locally owned choice for residential and commercial services in southern Maine. They'll be there for that new driveway, walkway, or excavation for your home and for your business with parking lot paving, road milling, heavy hauling, and competitive commercial pricing. So when you need your project done right and on your timeline, get a hold of the company with the appetite for excellence and the skills to see it through. Call Maine Commercial Contracting at 207-391-0540 for a free estimate or find them online at maincommercialcontracting.com. Well, welcome to the show, Ryan. We are so glad to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. This is great. I've been following your art on Instagram, and it's it's just absolutely amazing. So I'm a big fan, so I was excited when you agreed to come on the show and talk to us. So I want to dig in. I want to ask, you know, what was your first experience with art? And really, how did that affect and shape you as an artist today? Oh wow! All right. Well, thank thank you so much for the uh, for the kind words there. I really really appreciate that. I'm psyched to to chat with you all today. When thinking about my first experience with art, I I really don't have like a a core memory of like my very first experience. I mean, for as long as I've known, I've always kind of drawn, doodled things. I was really into comic books and cartoons as a kid, and on my father's side of the family. There are so many artists. Um, My uncle Charles was a pretty notable oil painter in the Virgin Islands. And every time I went to my grandmother's house, there's just like people making things. So I was always kind of around that energy of creation Mm -hmm. and um, kind of experimenting. So I, I really don't know when it first hit, but there was kind of that pivotal moment where I, I received a book about the, um, 70s and 80s subway uh, graffiti movement, um, subway art. And that was mm-hmm. from an after school teacher when I was about 10 or 11. That was a very kind of that that I, I very much remember because life took a completely different uh, direction after seeing that it just kind of, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, changed everything. So that's kind of the, the moment I remember being like, oh, this is something I want to do. Um, mm. but yeah, yeah, I think that was kind so of, that was at like moment. 10 years old. You, you received this. Is, is that how old you were? Yeah, I was about 10 or 11. I think, uh, I can't remember exactly. And so you received this book. And so did you immediately like know at that point, like, this is what I want to do art for a living. Like I want, this is what I want to do kind of with my life. Oh n- no, not even. I didn't know that until a few years, a few years ago. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> to be completely honest, I, I didn't even know it was a, a viable career option. I mean, um, growing up, you know, I had artists in my family, like I said, but only there were very few that were able to make it as their career. I mean, only mm. one, I believe, and they still had um, kind of other jobs as well. So I, it wasn't kind of a moment where I was like, I want to do this, especially because it was it was based around graffiti. So, I mean, you know, I was just kind of enamored, I guess would be mm. or, or slightly obsessed, I guess would be the way to put it. I was just <laughs> like, there are so many questions in my head as to how this thing happens that I was like, I, I need these answers. So that was kind of the moment where I just really dove in and was just studying and trying to find out as much information as I possibly could. Mm. All right. So I have two follow-up questions. Uh, sure. One is probably a little bit easier than the other. Uh, okay. <laughs> first of all, 
you mentioned comic books and I was a, I was a comic book sort of kid, but I nice. not like the typical comic books. I, I, for whatever reason, I'd gravitated towards like GI Joe and transformers. Cause I was, oh, I'm yeah. like the, so, so the typical eighties <laughs> kid, it's kind yeah. of, painful. <laughs> yeah. so first question is what were some of like your favorite comic books or was it just sort of like whatever you get your hands on? Yeah. So I was a Marvel kid still, mm -hmm am <laughs> you know, now that they've kind of transitioned over to like movies they've done such a wonderful job of like keeping the you know like now the parents kind of reminiscent of those times and then you know mm -hmm. introducing the young ones mm -hmm. to it but i yeah i was a very big marvel guy my favorite comics were daredevil comics um punisher silver surfer and x-men uh, those were those are my top. Yeah. Yeah. X-Men was always X-Men was when I got into later on after I kind of yeah. was like, eh, OK, Transformers <laughs> and G.I. Joe. Let's see what the mutants are about, you know? Yes. Yep. <laughs> and the, the other thing I'm curious about, because I've always been fascinated by graffiti as mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. because to me, it's one of those things that I just I can't quite connect the dots of how mm -hmm. it all happens, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, so I can I can only imagine like what is kind of the learning curve for graffiti yeah. for making art like because I mean, there's got to be different techniques and that has to be a whole lot of practice because just the times I've worked with spray paint it goes every freaking place I'm like I can't <laughs> yeah. imagine anybody actually being able to control this stuff. <laughs> oh. That's that's totally fair. Um, it it is extremely difficult. Um, so I mean I I I'll. I, honestly, I, I want to go on the record also saying, you know, graffiti uh, taught me so much and I love graffiti art, but I also don't advocate for illegal activity. So mm -hmm. I look, you know, this is something that was part of my life and helped me uh, build a skill set that allows me to do what I do today. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, a lot of a lot of it, a lot of the activity is stuff I don't really suggest people getting <laughs> right into, um, yeah. you know, so I just, yeah. I mean, I guess putting that part out there, the learning curve is extremely tough because of a lot of those reasons. So, yeah. you know, you, you had to kind of find a place where you could practice maybe like, mm -hmm. you know, something a little more out of the way. And then it's the actual act of doing it. You're, you're risking your freedom, you're risking a lot of other things because these areas where kind of graffiti, at least, you know, this is decades and decades ago, where graffiti was allowed to kind of exist and thrive were kind of the overlooked parts of the town, overlooked parts of the city, where, you know, you have a lot of other elements there. So as a young kid, you're kind of putting yourself into this pretty dangerous situation just to learn an art form. And that's before you even press the nozzle down and try to figure that part out. Um, mm. So it is it is a really steep learning curve. There's a lot of obstacles and adversity you have to go through in order to even just figure out how to do it. So I call it my kind of unconventional arts education. Um, <laughs> but if there's, if there's anything or any route that kind of teaches you that if you want to do something, you find a way and you make it happen. Mm. That mm. was kind of my graffiti education. And, um, mm. yeah, because of that too, because of all the adversities and things you have to face, I still like working with people who have a graffiti background because there's a certain mm -hmm. level of kind of grit, I think, and mm -hmm. like ability to kind of pivot and work through projects that, um, you know, kind of people that have had that experience have. I think that's similar in a lot of, you know, a lot of different areas of the arts, even in music. Mm -hmm. Like you, if you, even if you've never met someone before or, or played with them before, you're like, oh yeah, you ever play that place? Oh yeah, that place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, or you ever work with that? Yeah. You ever work with that guy? Oh yeah, I've got a dozen <laughs> stories about him. He's, yeah. he's great, but oh my gosh, it's just insane. <laughs> Like oh, all those definitely. things kind of come out, like you have that yeah. shared kind of experience, even if it wasn't sure. directly with each other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. It's like, oh, you, you survived that one, huh? Oh yeah, no, we got stories. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, very much, very much the case. <laughs> yeah. So do you have, uh, as an artist, do you mm -hmm. have artists that you're inspired by? Do you have specific, ar any type of artist? Is there a specific artist that inspire you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm inspired by a wide array of artists. I mean, fortunately enough, in 
Portland here, I mean, I'm born and raised here. Like there's always been such a thriving creative mm. community. Um, so I could literally just like walk outside and go to, you know, go downtown and see some amazing work by people who were local and lived right in the area. Um, so there's, I, I feel very, very fortunate to have so many people in close proximity that are inspiring. And I'm, I'm st- sometimes I laugh with, with folks. I still feel like a little kid to, in a sense where I, you know, I, I really appreciate, you know, kind of you know, technical skill, you know, like I always love kind of seeing people put their best foot forward, but even just taking the time to think about something and put that onto a canvas that you mm. created this from yourself. I get so excited. Like, I don't, I, it really doesn't even matter what's on there. I just look at the person like you took the time to make this. That is awesome. Like mm-hmm. you, you know, you sat with your thoughts and you worked this out and this is your creation. I get so excited by that. And so, I, I mean, that being the case, I, there's a lot of folks <laughs> that, that I get uh, inspired from locally and even on a national scale, especially now with social media, you're able to keep up with mm. um, artists all over the world. Um, mm. So yeah, there's so many. I can name a few, I guess. Um, uh, locally, um, I mean, geez, my I have some close friends that are phenomenal. Uh, B. Daniel, Kelly Rue, Spencer McLeod, uh, Will Sears, and my wife Rachel, of course, is a very mm-hmm. big inspiration. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, There's a smart man there, ladies and gentlemen. You know, <laughs> checking the boxes here. Got to make sure we <laughs> got to make sure we do that. Um, and and then on a on a national level, I mean, I really kind of gravitate towards people who have had a similar kind of upbringing as me a lot of like uh, you know people who wrote graffiti and then ended up like kind of turning it into an artistic practice um Mm -hmm. Tristan Eaton comes to mind um Futura 2000 comes to mind Say Adams and Steve Powers I think are the top there nice all right so there's someone's uh Instagram research project for this for today right there (laughs) yep (laughs) So you and your wife, Rachel, get to create art together. Uh, so mm-hmm. and this is a bit of a loaded question because you are talking to a <laughs> husband and wife team here. Uh, <laughs> what is it like working with your spouse creatively? And and what are some of the benefits and what are some of the challenges? Oh, it's um, it's smooth sailing every time. There's never any challenges, you know. It's, uh, uh, see, <laughs> just here, I, here I wanted to say, Ryan might not be the most honest of gentlemen, but he's he's a, definitely one of the smartest. There we go. You know, you got. Yeah. I've no, never been able so, to master <laughs> saying that. I'm just like, oh yeah, yeah there's this man. <laughs> no, I was I was completely kidding. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's wonderful on so many fronts. I mean. Uh, you know, obviously we, we share our lives together and we both happen to be creative people who are, you know, kind of within the same field. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, I think one of our strengths and, and what we realized early was as a team, we really have a lot of confidence in the other person's abilities. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of like gaps that each other fill, um, Mm -hmm. for the other one, if that makes any sense. I think I've described it before, like I'm very much like a technical precision, like just geek, like I will sit and you just, you know, obsess over making something kind of technically correct. Whereas Mm -hmm. Rachel's grasp on color theory, and kind of the soul in her work is something that like, it's unmatched. So we kind of have these areas where if we're struggling with something, we kind of know who to ask and, and trust their kind of expertise in that it doesn't always work that way. <laughs> Sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, we, we both think we're the, the expert and we're like, I don't know, you know, but most of the time when we are working, uh, it's not always a equal collaboration. A lot of times it's one person's kind of the design lead. The other person might be the install lead. So you kind of know who to kind of defer to there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, this is, this is your design. So if you know what's right, then I'm just going to follow your, your lead here. So mm. yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's amazing. I feel extremely fortunate, but you know, it takes a lot of communication and a lot of trust in the other person's skill set and, and abilities to make it work. I think we can relate to that just a little mm. bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like what you said about how it's not always an equal collaboration. Like it's true. You, you, there are times when you're just like, no, this is your thing. And I'm here mm-hmm. to, I'm here to help your thing come to fruition. However I can. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And then there's other times like, okay, now it's my thing. Yeah, <laughs> my yeah, time. absolutely. I need, I need your help here to kind <laughs> yeah. of fulfill this vision. You know, I, that I is think that great. helps a lot. Yeah, no, yeah, I think, sure. I mean, just kind of knowing kind of clear expectations and kind of knowing people's roles in the project, like really helps a lot. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I mean, I love being able to kind of at times shrug my shoulders and be like, well, you know, this one's on you, <laughs> you know, like, yes. uh, you know, you, this is, this one's yours, you know, you got this, you know, like I'm here to, here to help, you know? So, yeah, yeah well, it's, 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 it takes off some of that pressure, but then it also, mm -hmm. it, to me, the, the best thing, it, the, one of the worst things about being creative for my own purposes is sometimes it, there's not a, there's not a great surprise. Like you can totally surprise mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. But when mm -hmm. you're when you're working on somebody else's vision, like there's a possibility of surprise around the corner, every corner. And oh I, gosh, I yeah. kind of appreciate that. It's like, wow, I totally wouldn't have seen that working yeah. out that way. Cool. Oh, All right. Yeah. 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 That 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 is another element to it that you learn so mm -hmm. much by seeing someone else's creative process, I think. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that helps open doors in your own creative process. I mean, there's sure. you could probably look at both of our bodies of work prior to meeting and now and see how we've influenced each other in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know you can for mine because my grasp on color was terrible prior to her. She helped out a lot. So, <laughs> that's, so cool. that's, uh, that's one part of it. So I wanted to ask, so what, you know, what is it that inspired the, the kind of the geometric style of your art? Was there something that just inspired you to go that route? Cause it's, it's just so, it, it's so cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so kind of an interesting story there, I think. Well, first, I've always, you know, kind of been obsessed with letter forms and kind of vending letter forms from the, the years of writing graffiti. So this style actually came from, I feel like my life, it was just kind of a side note, I feel like my life is kind of this series of like, don't do that. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and, then, and then somehow, some way, like either over time or something, it like ends up working out. And that was kind of the case here. Um, I got asked to do a sign for a, um, a restaurant that was in a small town that had these very strict sign ordinances. Um, so they wanted the name of their restaurant on this thing because they had this big like sound barrier. So it's this massive just kind of wooden partition that just really wasn't that uh, good looking. So they, could you paint this? We wanted to say, you know, the name of our place, but we can't because of the sign ordinances. And I was like, okay, well, what if I mask it in there and then they have to prove that they see it in there? So I, I started this geometric design based around this word. And then I kind of cut it up and started doing what I continue to do, which is kind of make line work designs based off of flourishes you would put on different letters. And that kind of was the first moment where I was like, oh, that could work. So it was it was kind of born out of a, you know, you can't do this. And I'm like, well, I'm going to find a creative way to still do it, but that's not so cool. quite, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that's where it kind of started. And, you know, the, the letters were so masked in there that I mean, to the the I think just regular person walking by it just looked like a you know geometric design. Um, yeah. But they were they were hidden in there for sure. That's so, so cool. I love that because to me, so many going back to, you know, doing any kind of design project for myself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the, my least favorite things to do because mm -hmm. I don't have any boundaries. I, I can do it as there's no timetable. Like mm -hmm. I can, I can always put it off. I can add anything I want. And to me, that's like, that's my nightmare because mm -hmm. I need, I found I can be so much more creative when someone's like, okay, you've got 12 hours and yep. it has to yeah. be this and this and this, <laughs> and you only have these three things to work with and they're, they're not good. Go. It's like, yep. um, yeah. All right. And you, you you work within those boundaries and you all of a sudden are doing things that you thought, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work and, and how in, important kind of some of the times limitations can be to creativity. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, that's that's you're, you're touching on something that's kind of very prevalent throughout my work is that a lot of times there are letter forms and statements within every single one of these pieces. And I think for me, it's kind of setting those limitations because you know I, the letters are symbols that you can only manipulate so much until it is no longer recognizable as what it needs to be so that's mm -hmm. what that is it's like with me because if i have 
kind of, and I'm, I'm, you know, kind of exploring this now and work, but like, if I have free reign to just do whatever, it's like, I, I kind of do the same thing. I either kind of get stuck or I go back to like old habits that are, that are like comfortable mm-hmm. <laughs> or I'm just like, you know, uh, come back to me in five years when I, you know, am done tinkering with this thing. So yeah, having those limitations, I, I, I mean, I personally really enjoy it. That's cool. Yeah, I, I found myself now whenever I, I wind up in those situations, the first thing I do is like, I can do anything I want. All right, I need to set some limitations now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Let me set up a fence exactly. for myself. Yeah. I'll, leave, I'll, yeah. I'll leave a <laughs> tiny little gate that maybe <laughs> yeah. I need if I need to get out, but otherwise I need to play in this area. Yeah. yeah, which is like the oddest thought when you're really thinking about like kind of the creative mind and the ability to literally do whatever you want to like mm-hmm. – impose limitations on yourself like mm-hmm. seems so wrong but to me i mean it's it's so it's so helpful um right and kind of helps like build a framework for what i'm gonna do from there mm-hmm. yeah yeah the example i always give is uh george lucas you know the the og star wars trilogy everyone's mm-hmm. like oh my gosh this is so great and then oh the prequel trilogy is coming in george can do whatever he wants and everyone saw episode <laughs> one they're like maybe this wasn't a good idea like, maybe ooh, everything he yeah. wants to do was like i don't know uh, trade yeah. embargoes and everything else this is not Let's the star go. wars i was thinking of <laughs> yeah that is a very very good example of what could happen. <laughs> yeah. i don't yeah. want to make episode one i want to make episode five that's what i want yeah. to do creatively <laughs> Yep. So yep. do you have, I mean, and I know this is, this is tough. Uh, do you have a favorite piece of art that you've done or a project that is your favorite? Yeah. So I think I, I, I kind of do. Um, so one of the first portraits I ever tried to paint with spray paint was for my oldest daughter, Zoe. Um, when she was, you know, first born, I, I mean, you know, life changed so much and mm. I was just so enamored with this, this kid that I, I was like, I need to paint a portrait of her with spray paint. And I, at that point, I don't think I had tried it yet. So that was the first one I ever did. And that one to me is very special. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, for, for so many reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one always kind of sticks out when people are like, what's your favorite piece? I'm like, I think it's that one, honestly, just cause it was just pure emotion and just love driving this idea and it kind of gave me the confidence to try something different which also kind of opened a whole new lane Mm -hmm. so I think that'd be my favorite piece Uh, my favorite project I just completed one last year um, in Bethel Maine at the Gem Theater and it's about it's the entire facade of a theater using about 29 colors a couple hundred gallons of paint and took about six weeks to complete. I believe it's the second largest mural in the state next to the whale wall, just square footage wise. Um, wow. But mm. that one I'd say is my my favorite project to date because it was extremely tough. <laughs> it was, we mm. battled the, like the, the elements. I mean, oh my gosh, we got rained out so much and there's just so much on the spot pivoting that needed to happen yet. Mm-hmm you know, with, with the folks I had working with me and the wonderful owners and team at the gym, we were able to just power through and get this thing completed. And, you know, in the moment, it was probably one of the more stressful jobs (laughs) I've ever had. Mm -hmm. But in Mm -hmm. hindsight, looking back on it, seeing what we were able to accomplish together is just like, so, so special to me. Um, And it was totally a group effort. Oh yeah, yeah. You've seen. It's have you so seen it in cool. person, or do you see? No, I, I'd love to see it in person. I've seen photos <laughs> of it, and it's just amazing. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was a, it was a big one. It was uh, like we kind of laughed afterwards. Like we're the only people that would think that we could pull something like this off. <laughs> <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> somehow we made our way here. So yeah, that one is for sure one of yeah. the most memorable. Absolutely, that's so cool. So what advice would you give to, you know, artists just starting out and trying to build a name or build a business for themselves? Like what, what's a, just a couple pieces of advice that you would give? Ooh, wow. Okay. Um, so I think first is that, I mean, I haven't found any shortcuts yet. If you find some shortcuts, let me know. But like, I don't, <laughs> I haven't found any yet. Honestly, hours spent really does mean something. I mean, mm. 
I've I've talked about this before, but I've only been full time on the creative side for the last two years. So all mm-hmm. of those other years, and I've paint been painting murals professionally for about twelve years now. So for that decade prior to, I was working a full time corporate gig all week, uh, sometimes traveling for work. And then anytime I was home, I would be on job sites or doing design work. So, I mean, there was one summer, I think I had two weekends off the entire, like the rest of the time I was just like work all day, work all night. So I had to really put the hours in to get to a mm-hmm. place where I was comfortable, where I personally felt comfortable enough to kind of make the leap over. So, Mm -hmm. I I mean, that's the most transparent way uh, Mm -hmm. that I can put it. Like, I just worked a lot and continue to work a lot. Like, it's it's really, it does just take time. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's there's that. And then I would also say for artists, too, is just be in this. This sounds very kind of obvious, but can get muddy sometimes when... Because I, I feel like my work is an extension of myself. It's all very personal, even commercial work. And sometimes you can feel the pressure to kind of change certain things about yourself to either fit into a different kind of, I guess, group or a different kind of you know realm of clients or whatever. And my my dad used to always say to me, "To thine own self be true." Like I even have it tattooed mm. on me at this point. And yeah. I, I would rather be broke in myself than a millionaire pretending to be someone that I'm not. So awesome. I, I say, be true to yourself and you will attract the right people and the right clients and mm-hmm. just stay true to yourself, which is easier said than done at times. But I think it's such an important part of being kind of an artist and a creative. And yeah, I mean, I guess for anybody, but yeah, that's that's one thing I would I would say. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you have any, like, any kind of checks or, I mean, this might might sound weird, but or maybe it's just something that sounds weird to me. I don't know. Uh, But do you have any sort of like checks or or kind of like touchstones that keep you from wandering away from who you are? Like, do you ever like have those gut checks where you're like, okay, wait a minute. Am I straying from, from who I am or what I'm doing? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I, um, I mean, I think it's, it starts with me with, I feel so, again, I I say, you know, I feel fortunate for a lot of things, but it's very true. Um, I have a group of best friends. There's about eight of us, nine of us, and we've been friends since we were in about third, fourth grade. And fortunately enough, we're like still buddies and some are still close, but some are in in different countries, but we all have retained this relationship, this very tight relationship um, Mm -hmm. through our entire lives. And also with, I'm very close to my family and of course with, with Rachel and I really need to have honest folks around me um, Mm. that know me. And I feel like they're always a great kind of uh, gauge, you know, like if I, you know, there's been times I'm thinking about doing this and they kind of give you the, uh, really? (laughs) It kind of makes you, (laughs) kind of makes you think like, wait a second, like these, these folks sometimes know me better than I know myself because I might Mm. be thinking about something completely different. So having, you know, kind of honest people that, that are around you really helps, but also, you know, when it's not right, I've always had those feelings. And there's been, I mean, I'm far from being perfect on this front, but sometimes, you know, somebody dangles the right amount of money in front of you. And you're like, you know what, I think I can make this work. And Mm. from what (laughs) I've experienced, those never work out well either Mm -hmm. it's like you know kind of personally it doesn't feel right and it just kind of eats away at you or the project just ends up being you know tougher than than you'd expect and and a lot of those times you kind of have that that kind of like you know, I feel like, you know, as, as humans, you know, when kind of danger is approaching or like, or when something's <laughs> happening that you're like, I shouldn't be here. This, this doesn't feel right to me. And listening to that is so key. Yeah. Um, yeah. And those, those are, I think, so yeah, kind of the family and really kind of listening to yourself, taking those yeah. moments of like, does this feel okay? And even if you, you got to be able to walk away from some things and, and just know that that was the right move for you. 
It's so true. And I think that yeah. just applies to, I mean, anyone in business, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. anyone that is a business owner or entrepreneur, it's that applies to. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So we always like to ask this question because there's so many different answers and we we just love to hear people's thoughts. But how would you say that you would define success? <laughs> All right. Oh, Personally this... <laughs> or professionally? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there's there's layers to this, but I think personally, I guess kind of when I think about like legacy and and kind of mm. what I would see as kind of a successful life, it really has absolutely nothing to do with business. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that sounds strange or not, but it's, no, not it's really, all. I mean, I, I have loved ones in my life that I really, really care for and put above everything. And mm-hmm. if at the end of the day, they know how much I love and care for them and they felt that and they're able to kind of carry that forward and hopefully pass that down to their families and whatnot, I would see that as a successful life. And yeah, I mean, you know, I think, you know, obviously part of that does tie into business because you need to have money to have a stable, you know, everything to provide for everyone. But I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, I just, I, I hope, you know, the folks that are in my life know how much I love and cared about them and that they're able to kind of spread that same love and, and energy forward. Mm-hmm. I would see that as a successful life. Yeah. And then I guess on the business side, I guess, which is, is kind of different. I would see success as kind of being passionate about what you do and mm. being able to affect others in a positive way with what mm-hmm. you do. I would see that as being successful. I sometimes mm. I'll be like, you know, like anywhere at, at a store or grocery store and the person behind the counter will just be like so warm and friendly and they'll completely change my day around. And yeah. I'm like, that is a successful person. Like that is amazing what you were able to accomplish there. And so, yeah, I see, I see that as, as success kind of in business and work. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's yeah. True. No, those are, those are great. I'm yeah. going to steal uh-huh. both of those. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Well, Ryan, uh, thank you so much yes. for taking time out of your day to talk with us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And I feel like I've learned a lot and I, yes. I hope our listeners have as well. I'll make sure that I have uh, links to your website, social media, and all of that uh, so that people can go check out your art and also contact you with hopefully hopefully some projects here. Um, Wonderful. But thank, thank you. you so much. And uh, we really appreciate uh, your time and, and just wish you great success this year. Thank you so much. And likewise. This has been great. And just continue doing your amazing work and just inspiring so many people because it's uh, it truly is inspiring. Oh, my gosh. Thank you all so much. It was a pleasure talking to you both. Once again, we'd like to thank our sponsor and encourage you to check them out through the link in the show notes. And thank you again for listening.